What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Block is Hot. Today is Saturday, which means we're going over this week's CNFT market updates. And I'm pretty excited to share this week simply because I wasn't here last week and there has been a lot of stuff that has been going on since I've been gone, so there are a lot of things to cover. That being said guys, I just wanna remind everyone here that this is not financial advice and this is simply my opinion of different things that are going on in the market and what I think could potentially happen. But without further ado, let's get into it. First things first guys, how is the overall volume in the CNF team market looking? And to be honest, guys, we have been on a very slight downtrend, but the numbers still look really good to me. A lot of days we are averaging above 1.5 to 2 million, which is substantially better than what we were doing about a month and a half to two months ago. I think the reason why we're seeing a little bit less volume now than when we did about a week or two ago is that we just had so many huge drops all happen at the same time. We had those, those mechanisms drop from over exposed. We had the Clay Nation pitches. We had Ada and Vedas. We had Dead Rabbit Resurrection Society. I mean, literally everything that was coming out was doing absolutely crazy on the secondary market. And it only makes sense that things will calm down over time. And then we'll eventually get into another pop-off where we get super greedy. A lot has changed though in the week or two that I've been gone. And a lot of stuff hasn't been doing too crazy as far as flipping. And it's crazy just how fast the market can change. And that's why you have to constantly pay attention and be able to adapt. I'm still focusing on minting stuff right now, but I'm being a lot more careful and I'm definitely not buying stuff right when they drop on the secondary market. A lot of these new projects, guys, you want to be a little bit careful right now because a lot of them are simply not going to last. I mean, think about it. We can't have thousands of projects in this ecosystem when there's only a certain amount of money or a certain amount of ADA to go around. So even though I think that this is going to grow substantially over time, we have to make sure that we're not over leveraging into brand new projects because they haven't shown promise yet, guys. We have no idea if they're going to last, if they're going to be established, if they're going to be relevant in the long term. And that's why right now my personal strategy is to mint good quality mints, flip a decent amount of them, maybe I keep some, and then if I like that project, wait a week, wait two weeks, wait three weeks, and see if that price is just collapsing down or if the hype is still there. Yes, I might have missed out an opportunity to get in at a cheaper price, but I don't really care, guys. You don't want to be chasing a lot of these new projects right now unless you're unbelievably con... Uh, un unbelievably confident. And that's just my personal opinion, but that is what I'm doing right now. I'm really focusing on those flips and those swings, and I'll be keeping my eye on stuff that has come out recently that I think has potential, but I'm not getting in yet. I want to wait and see what happens. As far as this week's top 10 largest volume projects, we have number one pitches at Clay Nation at 1.1 million ADA. Number two, we have Chilled Kongs, three Safari Squad. We go to Space Buds at number number four, Cabins by Ape Society at five. Then we have Ugly Bros, The Definitive, which is their new drop. We have Lucky Number Seven, Smooth Yeti Snowmobile Parts. Eight is Pavia. Then we have Aping Riot Club at nine and the Ape Society at 10. And one thing you'll notice here, guys, is that a lot of these projects in the top 10 are all eight projects. Chilled Kongs, eight project. Safari Squad has different apes in their project, even though they aren't ape focused. Cabins by Ape Society, another ape centered project. We have Aping Riot Club, Ape Society, and even Ape Dow, which is the 11th spot. And this is why I was talking about buying so many mandrels recently, guys. I really think there's a big push into getting into Ape stuff. At the end of the day, if you think about it, an NFT is only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. So being able to see and figure out narratives that make sense that you believe more people are going to follow in the future is how you can make a lot of money in this space. And because people are coming over from Ethereum, they're looking for narratives. They're looking for connections. They're looking for comparables. And we have to think, oh, what are they going to compare, let's say, Board Ape Yacht Club to on the Cardano ecosystem? And how can I, as someone already in the Cardano ecosystem, position myself in a way that makes sense and is going to be able to capitalize on that narrative? Because even think about this further ahead, guys. Let's say in a year from now, when CNFTs are exploding or hopefully exploding, and a lot of new 
people that don't know anything about NFTs get into the space, what are they automatically gonna gravitate to? They're gonna gravitate towards things that they've heard go crazy on the secondary market and that has constantly been pounding on their head. And that's why all of these eight projects, guys, have been doing substantially well. My whole thing here and what I'm trying to do, once again, as a long-term investment, is figure out and drill down these narratives and position myself in a way that's going to be able to capitalize on them when more people come into this space. Now let's do a one take here of everything that's been going on in the CNFT market or things that have just been standing out to me. Number one guys, pitches at Claim Nation. They actually just released their map recently and you can actually go on their map and check out the coordinates and see where you're located. And by the way guys, most of the places you're located are not anything special which was anticipated. There's a couple plots that are near some major stuff that are going absolutely crazy, but odds are you didn't get anything too special. And I'm surprised that the price of these haven't really dipped down too much. This is a project that has really uh, bunked me. Uh, it's a project that there are just so many buyers and long-term holders on. And it's a project that really isn't having price movement like it should. So what I would recommend guys, if you're trying to get into this project is to average in your price. So let's say you're not in right now. Maybe you just buy one of them. And then maybe a week from now, maybe you buy another. And then maybe a week from now, maybe you buy another and you kind of get that average price. I actually just bought my first pitch back uh, and I got one of these baked nation pitches at around 430. Now the lowest these had really gone was about 350 to 400 ADA. So it's not too far from the place that you could have really bottomed here. Another thing that we have to realize with these pitches guys is that they are having their clay token airdrop sometime in the month of May. And there could be a lot of hype that gets built into that. And these prices could go up because of it. However, I'm not going super hard on this right now. Like I said, guys, I'm slowly getting my feet wet simply because I think it's going to take a while for a lot of this to come to fruition, to actually build this metaverse and to actually have those different projects with Snoop Dogg in the future. It's going to take a lot of time. And during that time, prices can chill out, hype can chill out and things can go down. But one thing I will say about Clay Nation is that they are the most hardcore hodlers out of any project out there. And there has been a lot of talk recently about Clay Nation basically beating or overcoming Space Buds as the number one project on the Cardano ecosystem. And I definitely think that actually has some merit. And I'll probably talk about that in a video all on its own. So uh, yeah, guys. And also as far as like which pitches to get, I'm still the most bullish on Clay Nation pitches. I really think that they're going to do a whole Baked Nation uh, PFP collab with Snoop Dogg. And you're going to get these really awesome PFPs. And I think those are going to go absolutely stupid. So personally, I'm a lot more bullish on the Baked Nation, but I know there's a lot of benefits with some of these other ones. Second project here, Chilled Kongs. Chilled Kongs have gone on an absolute run, guys, especially since last month when it was only at 600 ADA. These went absolutely stupid when they announced their mushroom, which was anticipated, and these have literally ran up all the way to 1,800 at that time, and I did sell three out of my five Chilled Kongs for about 15 to 1,600 ADA. I really wish I held on to them, or I wish I took out a loan on them using acronym DAO or Lending Pond, which I just made a video on yesterday, uh, because these just continue to run. And what's really interesting is these Chilled Kongs and the Ape Society have kind of been head to head when it comes to price, and that might be something in the future we have to pay attention to. Maybe if Chilled Kongs are a lot lower or a lot higher than Ape Society, maybe that means that we need to buy or sell one of the other because there's a huge price discrepancy. So something that I just realized recently, especially since there's a major, major fight between which one is going to be the number one winner. If you are currently holding these chilled Kongs, I recommend waiting until you really see these mutant trippy Kongs, uh, because I think those trippy Kongs could be super cool. And if they are super cool, then these could really go crazy. If you're a little bit worried about whether or not uh, it's going to look good, maybe once they announce the date that they're actually going to show them, maybe you get a loan on this and watch my video yesterday and maybe that'll allow you to lock in that profit yet still get two weeks, three weeks or four weeks to really have that buffer time in case these do look super cool and these kept going up. I think a big resistance level for these though guys are going to be that 3000 and if you just look at JPEG store right now, this floor is really, really deep. It's gonna take a lot of money to come in to get to that 3000 level and I think there is a chance that people do sell a lot of their Kongs with the announcement of those trippy Kongs if they don't look cool. So just keep that in mind as well. I'm personally
personally hodling the two I have, and I probably will do that loan technique if I know that that announcement for the actual images is coming out soon. Next project here is Safari Squad. Now these Safari Squad just released this past week. I believe it was 50 ADA to mint, so they're not much higher above the mint price. And if you got one of the floor pieces, you're really not doing too hot right now. I do think these look pretty cool, but when I looked at their website, I didn't really see anything too special. This is one of those projects that I'm putting on the sideline for now. And if there's still hype or if the floor is still doing good after three weeks or a month, maybe I buy a couple up. But right now is not the time for me to get into these new projects, especially since so many people are just buying it and flipping it. And a lot of times the hype is going away from one project and going into the next. So if I was to get into a project like this, I'm really looking for something that is going to stand out and blow me away and really separate itself from all these other projects. And I didn't really see anything that really did that with me with this project yet. Next project here, guys, is Space Buds. They're about 5,400 ADA right now. Now, Space Buds are interesting because there's a lot of talk and there's a lot of debate about Space Buds not doing a ton of stuff. And one of the things that you guys have to realize is that Alessandro, I believe it, who was the main developer to really do this, is focused on a ton of other stuff. Like he made Nami, he, he's literally doing so many other things. And his main focus isn't really to just spend a lot of time and resources onto growing Space Buds buds. That's not really his thing. And that's not a problem. Like he has done so much for this space that you can't really complain about it. And even though I'm very bullish on space buds in the long term, we do have to realize guys that projects that aren't providing a lot of utility or doing a lot of new things are simply relying on their narrative and community. And the narrative for space buds is really strong and the community is really strong, but I can't help but feel that we're going to have a lot of other projects that are going to be providing so much utility that Space Buds could be overthrown. Like if you compare Space Buds to Clay Nation, you see with Clay Nation that the owners are docs. They talk all the time. They go on different Twitter spaces. They got collabs with Snoop Dogg. They got collabs with Good Charlotte. They're constantly doing things for their community. They're constantly out there and engaged and having a metaverse and doing all these ambitious things. And when I look at a project like Clay Nation, I'm like, wow, you know, Clay Nation is constantly working, constantly grinding to do these big things whereas Spacebud is really just relying on its narrative. So I'd like to see some stuff come out from Spacebuds, but I'm actually a little less bullish on Space Buds. Like I think a lot of people have in their mind, hey, you know, make a bunch of ADA, get into Space Buds, hold that Space Bud and make a ton of money. And even though I do think Space Buds is a safe play just because of how strong its narrative is, narrative is as, as being one of the first projects, I do think there's better buys out there. And I do think that there's a, a lot more potential with other projects that are definitely putting in a lot more work and trying to grow, even though there is that slightly more risk. So uh, something interesting with it, something to consider. I personally don't have any space buds anymore because I was in that situation where I was like, Hey, I, you know, can use this ADA and I can flip it, flip it and swing trade it. Or I could get into stuff like dead pixels that is coming out with a game and has staking and all these other things and potentially make more money with that. Next project here, Cabins by the Ape Society. Now these just released recently. There are 10,000 of them and they're split up between like cabins, uh, chateaus, and I wrote it down somewhere here, guys. I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, cabins, chateaus, and cottages, uh, estates. Cottages, estates, and chateaus. I have, I have no idea what I was saying. But regardless, guys, there are all these different sizes. And what's cool about these is you actually have all these different street names and locations. And all of these actually have an SLVD rating. And this goes from A to Z. And the closer you are to A, the better it is. And that SLVD rating uh, basically calculates the size, the land, the value, and the distance. Uh, like the average value of the land in the distance from the center in order to really get the overall value or rating of these different cabins. And these cabins are going to enable you to not only decorate them and make them look super cool, but you're going to be able to stake both ape society as well as non apes in these different cabins and earn their society token, which is pretty cool. Now, where do I see these going? Well, guys, these were holding at 300 for a while, and now they've been dipping below that. And to be honest with 
with you guys. There has been so much metaverse stuff coming out recently that I think this whole entire uh, field of the NFT space is starting to get a little oversaturated. And my personal opinion, I could see these going down to 200 ADA a lot more than I could see these running up to like 350 or 400 ADA. So in my personal opinion, I'm kind of taking a step back from these. I'm waiting to see if these go down a little bit lower. And if they do, maybe I'll buy some for the long term. But I personally like getting into the actual apes more than getting into these cabins. Next project here is Ugly Bros The Definitive. This is one of the projects I told everyone to enter the raffle for because I expected it to be at least a double up. And that's pretty much where we're at here, guys. If you got one of these floor pieces, you did get a double up. Now, I think these do look pretty cool. I don't own any. Unfortunately, I was in California and I wasn't even able to pay attention to whether or not I won any of the raffles. But, uh, you know, you can add sound to these soon, you know, cool stuff. Uh, Surge is a big part of the community. Uh, so keep an eye on these. I do expect that 150 ADA level to hold pretty well. And I do think as this community continues to build that this could be a decent long-term investment, even though they're not, in my opinion, doing anything too crazy when it comes to adding additional utility. They really just have that strong community and track record and do a good job marketing. Next project here is the Smooth Yeti Snowmobile Parts. Now these parts are actually doing really good guys and if you're in my discord I actually told everyone that I wasn't going to sell any of my yetis because I felt like the price for yetis were really undervalued and I'm about to talk about the yetis a little bit more I think I have them up on one of these pages but these parts are actually doing incredible and I actually cooked to F up on these parts guys I actually was able to make some snowmobiles now right now we are kind of in this price discovery phase of where we're trying to go but I am very bullish on both the yetis and these parts in the long term for this project and I am personally keeping the snowmobiles that I have created. I was actually able to sell a decent amount of my parts at this price and I was able to make a, a lot of snowmobiles uh, with the remaining parts and I'm just going to be holding those snowmobiles. As far as the price goes, it really depends with these parts guys. I know that they're having their whole entire Yetiverse sometime in the future, probably in quarter three and these snowmobiles are going to have a very large part and you being able to get special land, which I'm guessing is going to have special benefits. There's also going to be royalty distributions where 10% of the royalties are going to be distributed to everyone holding a snowmobile and at least five yetis. There's also going to be uh, different raffles. They're going to have, oh my gosh. Where is this stuff? Like I, I like can't even read my own handwriting sometimes. Yes, there is going to be special land. There's going to be whitelists. There's going to be airdrops. There's going to be that 10% royalty split if you have a snowmobile as well as Yetis. And there's also going to be 1,000 ADA given away to a random uh, snowmobile holder as well as different contests that you can join if you have these different snowmobiles. So I expect these to do well long term. And I expect that once they announce the Yetiverse sometime in quarter three, that these could do extremely well. I don't think that 10% split is really going to end up being a ton when it comes to the royalties and a ton as passive income. I wish it was a little bit higher, but even that being said, I am bullish on these. If you're trying to make one of these snowmobiles, I would see if you can get some matching parts that are relatively cheap. Otherwise, I would just wait on this market to cool. Some of these parts could go a little bit lower in the short term just because it is going to take a while for them to really come to fruition with all of their different promises. Next project here is Pat. This is one of the highest. Uh, I think this was number eight on our list, guys. And they're currently going for 310 ADA. Now, Pavia is kind of facing a similar thing as Space Buds, where it's one of the OG projects. So a lot of people really invested in it because it was like the biggest and it was like the OG. And Pavia was like the OG metaverse project for the Cardano ecosystem. And that's a pretty strong narrative. But I think the reason that Pavia has not been really doing super great recently is simply because all these other projects projects are releasing their metaverses and they look a lot cooler than a lot of these plots of Pavia. If you think about it, guys, Clay Nation already had a huge backing. They already had this whole Clay concept. You know, Ape Society, they already had a huge following with their apes and a huge community with their apes where you can have a PFP of your ape. And then the cabin is an addition to that. The Clay Nation pitches are an addition to that. Pavia's sole focus were these uh, pieces of land and all it is is a plain piece looking of land.
end. So the real utility with Pavia is going to be one that they're the OG and they're one of the first. And the second thing is, is that they're hopefully the furthest ahead when it comes to their actual development of their metaverse. But to be honest, guys, they've been a little bit slow to act and I feel like they could be doing more. I'm still holding my pieces of Pavia. I still like how they're already capped out on land. So there's not gonna be any more land. And I do like the wallet to holder distribution. And I do believe a lot of people still believe in Pavia, but I just don't like how all these other metaverses are coming out that in my opinion, look a lot cooler. Like Pavia's really gotta get their butt in gear and start delivering on a lot of these things that they said they would and really capitalize on their first mover uh, initiative or they're gonna get left in the dust in my opinion. Next project here is the Aping Riot Club. Now, Aping Riot Club doesn't even have a website. So whenever a project doesn't have a website, I literally could care less about that project. I do think that these look pretty good, but if you don't have a website, then how can I expect you to do very well in the long term? Personally, I am staying away from this project for now. Maybe it'll bite me in the butt because Ape Stuff is doing very well recently, but I just can't trust a project that can't put a very minimum amount of time in to literally making a website. I feel like these guys just paid someone on Pfeiffer, uh, in my opinion, made some cool apes, marketed a little bit, did a couple giveaways, sold a bunch of ADA, and uh, now I have no idea whether or not they're gonna follow through on a lot of these different things. If you like them, great. For me, it's too risky for, for me to be a long-term holder and get in on the secondary. Ape Society is going for about 2100 right now. They did go all the way up to 3000 ADA when they announced the cabins. They had a pullback to 2000. They then had a jump back up to 2500, and now they're creeping to that 2000 ADA number again. Getting in at 2000 ADA is a pretty good buy in the long term. We could see these go uh, to about 1800 uh, area potentially. But in my opinion, I think that if you can get in around 2000, that's a pretty good buy. And I'm gonna be looking in uh, around that price to see if I can get any and uh, basically get back into Ape Society because I am very bullish on this project in the long term. Next project, Ape Dow. Uh, this is another project that's an Ape project that I think is doing good just because it's an Ape project. And when you look on their website, guys, it is very cookie cutter, it is very bland. I am not a fan of Dows, to be honest with you guys, because I haven't really seen any Dows really distribute Ape and then the second thing with DAOs, guys, is it you need to be able to trust the team to actually be able to deliver and uh, you know basically give the ADA and assets back to the people that are a part of the DAO. And I just don't trust a project that isn't doxxed saying they're gonna be a DAO. Like if you're going to be a DAO, your ass and your whole team better be doxxed or I'm not gonna be a part of it. Because how can I trust that you're actually going to distribute these profits that the DAO uh, technically owns when you're not even putting your face out there uh, and when you're not even investing a decent amount of time into the overall website. So this is another project, guys, that I am staying away from now, and hopefully I don't kick my ass about it in the future, but uh, I personally don't think I will. I I'm not seeing it with some of these eight projects that are coming out. Next thing here, Clay Nation, going for about 2,800. Uh, this price has been holding very well between, you know, probably 2,600 and 3,000. Uh, I think Clay Nation is gonna do very well in the future. They've exhibited that they are probably the best project of all CNFTs right now, uh, in my opinion. I really think they're going above and beyond uh, pretty much all the projects out there. Maybe Ape Society has a run for its money in Dead Pixels, but I really think Clay Nation is just absolutely killing the game. I need to get back into this project, but for like 2,800 ADA, it's like, dude, oh my gosh. You know, I'm hoping that this could go down. Maybe if it goes down to about 2,500, maybe I'll be interested in getting back in at that price. Next thing here, guys, are these Mechanism Overexposed. These are going for above 500 ADA, and they actually did have a run up all the way to 1,000 ADA when they first dropped. I do like this project. I do believe in the team and I was able to get one in the raffle. I'm just holding that one for now. And if these do, for whatever reason, dip below 500, I'm gonna be buying a couple more. One thing that you guys have to realize with this project, guys, is that they are releasing their black paper, which is like their white paper, on the 16th of this month, and they're really going to show sneak peeks of season two, as well as go over all of the perks that these mechanisms, as well as the Genesis, are gonna have. So there's a chance that these could run up leading up to that uh, announcement of that white paper, and that that could be a good swing trade, and there's also a chance here that these mechanism, that white paper is absolutely crazy, and the utility of these are gonna be absolutely crazy, 
and you're gonna be uh, regretting if you didn't get in. So I actually don't think getting in right now is a, is a bad idea. And maybe you take out a loan uh, right before that announcement, right again, uh, if these do have a run up. So that way you at least can guarantee uh, that profit. And then you also have the option once again of you know being able to repay the loan if these do grow crazy and if that white paper is absolutely insane. But long-term guys, I am very bullish on this project. Next thing here, dead pixels. These actually had a crazy run up all the way to 4,000 ADA. The big reason is, is that you can stake these on their website and earn ding. Ding is the main token that's gonna be in their play to earn game. Now that play to earn game, uh, there's a lot that I need to cover with that. I honestly need to make a whole entire video uh, regarding dead pixels, but I do think I am still very bullish on dead pixels. Uh, and there's just a lot that I have to cover with dead pixels. So I'm gonna leave that for another video. But yes, if you are holding a dead pixel, make sure you're staking that right now. As far as purchasing, <laughs> Man, as far as purchasing, I don't know, guys, just in the sense that these have gone on an absolutely crazy run up. Maybe we'll have a profit taking pullback, but there are a lot of people that are staking now and just forgetting about it and just holding. So who knows if that's gonna happen? Uh, I have no idea, guys, but I do think in the long term, these are gonna do very well and at least have a huge run up right leading right before that game. And then maybe that would be a good time to sell it right before the game actually releases because it could be one of those situations where it's like Epoch Marketplace or it's like free roam marketplace or all these amazing marketplaces. Like it could be an amazing game, but there's a world that people don't play that game. And then all of a sudden, all of the people that are holding dead pixels, hoping for that passive income end up not getting as much as anticipated because not that many people are playing the game. You feel me? So that might be a chance to uh, sell on the news and then maybe see if the game actually uh, brings in a lot of ADA like people are expecting. Next thing I wanna bring up here, guys, is Boss Planet in general. Boss Planet has been undergoing a massive sell-off. We really haven't seen levels this low in a really long time for Boss Cat. It's literally been since like January where we were at this level. It's about 1,100 for these Boss Cats, about 245 for their new Vox Cats that just came out as an airdrop, and I believe their Boss Planet is going for around 150 ADA. You know me, guys. I like paying attention to stuff that people aren't paying attention to, and I like buying stuff that people are selling. Now, I don't own any Boss Cat stuff right now, but if this does continue to go lower, that is going to be an opportunity for me to get in and buy that for the long term because I do think this team is doing a good job overall at delivering. I think the main reason that all of this stuff is going down right now is simply because there have been so many different projects that have been releasing and a lot of hype has been going away from Boss Cats and going into these other things. And there aren't a lot of major announcements of new things they're dropping uh, that are really going to be catalysts for the stuff that is already out there. And that's why I think we're just seeing an overall correction with this project. Long term though, I do think they'll do pretty well. I just think that they really kind of painted themselves with a bad narrative in the beginning. And there is a lot of polarization with this project. So there's probably better other projects to get into, but I'll tell you what, man, you know, if Boss Cats go below a thousand, I might have to buy one or two just as a long term and wait for them to release their next big thing or maybe even pick up some of these Vox cats because they are going to have a lot of utility and they really aren't going for too much ADA right now. Next project on our list is Seal Society. Another project that, you know, had a decent amount of hype behind it. Uh, you know, if you got in, you got a rare one, you could flip it, make some decent money. But in my personal opinion, this is another example of where I'm just kind of staying in the background and I'm not really messing with it just because it's a new project. And I want to see if this is a project that's actually going to last and actually keep its hype or if it's just going to fade away because to be honest with you guys there really isn't anything crazy they're doing in their roadmap or as far as utility goes so I just don't know why this wouldn't be another project that dies uh, but maybe that community is getting really strong and I have to give it another look. Next project is Space Pugs Alpha and one of my you uh, subscribers that has been following me since literally 70 subs is now one of the founders of this project. His name is Adam and he's going to be helping out Mike really developing this project and after talking to Adam for like an hour and a half or two hours yesterday I do think that these space pugs have a chance of doing very well in the future if they're able to deliver on a lot of the different ideas that he has stated one of the things that was going on with space pugs before getting in I was a little sketched out about the utility aspect it didn't really seem like there was going to be too much utility it really just seemed that there was going to be some sort of airdrop in the future and some floor buying but there really wasn't anything too crazy going on and Adam has really taken 
ownership of this project and really tried uh, figuring out some ideas, some unique ideas to really contribute to this project. Uh, one of the things that they are doing is they're doing some sort of investment uh basically team like a team of like let's say 10 people and essentially they're going to be taking some of this ADA they're going to be investing that ADA as a team and whatever profits they make they're going to be distributing to people that own these pugs now I think the minimum amount of pugs you need in order to get these ADA distributions are about 25 pugs which is a decent amount of pugs if the floor right now is about 189 uh, you know you're looking at three to four thousand dollars to really get some of those profit distributions I personally am still holding Holding all 10 of my pugs and I do think there there could be a continued run up leading up to that airdrop but personally I have not been buying any more I really want to see how things play out first and the floor for this has been going up a lot recently so I don't really want to chase stuff either but this is definitely a project guys that you should keep on your radar and I do think Adam is going to do a good job with help with helping manage and run this group for the future next thing that I want to bring up here is the smooth yeti mountain club and I cannot believe I've been talking for 25 minutes guys this is a long episode here uh, I basically just needed to catch up on a lot of stuff that I didn't catch up last week so I was like holy crap like this I know this is going to be a long one but I need to catch everybody up to speed of everything that has been going on uh, but Smooth Yeti Mount Club this was a situation that was very, very weird to me. Uh, it didn't have the run-up that I was anticipating. And I think what happened, guys, is a lot of people, uh, maybe people that were watching this channel, really bought these smooth Yetis, uh, basically bef hoping to swing them, right? Like the reason why swing trading works is you're doing what most people aren't doing. So if most people are buying, we're selling. When most people are selling, we're buying. And I think that because I had so much confidence about this project, maybe a lot of people that watch this channel or just heard about it had bought a lot of these smooth yetis in order to get a swing trade off of it. But what really happened is it created a lot more buyers uh, than sellers at that point if in time and for that reason when it came to actually selling it there wasn't as much new demand going in and a lot of people were trying to take their profits off that were trying to swing trade or try to get out of this and and that is one of the reasons guys that you have to not just blindly follow stuff you have to be adaptive with the market it's kind of crazy like I'm a little worried now recommending swing trades on some of these different projects because if too many people do it then it's not going to work as anticipated now these smooth Yeti Mountain Clubs, I'm still very bullish on, and I actually had kept all of my Smooth Yetis. I haven't sold a single one, and I was able to get a lot of those different parts, and this was a situation where you would have been much better keeping your Yeti and getting those parts than just selling your Yeti at those prices. These had dipped down all the way to 200 after the drop, so we still saw that sell-off after the drop, and that's why I really think a lot of people just followed this play and was hoping to swing trade it, and it literally just messed up the entire chart of what was supposed to happen and the peak came early like the peak came way too early for that right um but then what happened is we did have that sell-off. We got all the way down to 200 ADA, and that's another reason why I just bought like another five more Yetis this morning. I'm very bullish on this project, guys. Like this is something, in my opinion, that is going to do very well long-term, and I'm still holding to that, and I'm holding a bunch of these Yetis. I'm buying more Yetis, and I'm also getting a lot of those different parts. I really believe in Keeper. I like the roadmap. Everything they've been doing has had a good amount of art. The community is pretty strong. Uh, their different marketing uh, techniques have been working working. And uh, I really think that if you can get in around 200 for a long-term hold, that it does make sense for this project. Next thing here are the Cornucopia's Javelins and their Bubble Jets. Now, I was right about this, guys. This is going to be a whitelist access drop. You're not guaranteed if you have one of these vehicles to get their land that is hopefully going to be coming out sometime in the next month, but this is going to give you access. The way the drop is going to work, guys, is that the first group to be able to purchase this is going to be OGs in the Discord. So you're gonna to have to be in the Discord, you're gonna to have to verify your wallet, and if you are an OG of this project, you're gonna basically get first grabs of this land, and I'm sure there's gonna be a limit to how many you can buy. Then the second group is gonna go, and that's gonna be these Javelins as well as the Jets. Now there's no difference if you have a rare one, a common one, a mythic one, it literally doesn't matter. If you have one of these Javelins or one of these Jets, you are going to have the next shot at being able to get some of that land. By the way, 
way, guys, recommend, you know, being in the Discord and verifying your wallet now, uh, just in case any sketchy stuff happens in the future. The next group, if there are any pieces of land yet uh, left, are people that have been in the Discord for at least 30 days. And then after that is anyone, is pretty much anyone in the Discord uh, that has been in there for at least a day can get the land. And because of this announcement, guys, these have gone crazy. As expected, these are now 248 ADA. Uh, you know, I was buying these up like crazy at 40, 50, 60 ADA. If you watch my channel for a while now, you know that I've been bullish about these for a while. And I still have, I, I believe I have like 80 of these with all different rarities. And I've only ever sold one Javelin. I've only ever sold one Javelin and I've just been keeping them. And right now I still have not sold them. When I called another play a couple weeks ago when I was anticipating this whitelist, these were going for about 100. I thought it was gonna do a double. It did, it went to 200. It had a profit taking pullback to 160 and now that they gave more confirmation uh, now we're back up to this 240 level if you want to get out now it's not a bad time where you can guarantee your profit but I personally think that these are going to continue to run because they've been talking up this land sale so much and land has been doing very well recently when you compare it to other releases and I think a lot of people are really going to want their hands on this especially since I think Cornucopius is so far ahead of a lot of all of the, all of these other metaverses when it comes to actually having the utility utility uh, set in stone. Like they've really done a lot of stuff guys. And I do think that they're probably the furthest ahead out of all metaverse projects when it comes to the play to earn metaverse gaming aspect. So uh, yeah, I'm excited about these. I think they're gonna do very well long-term. I think buying right now might be a little bit more risky. I think your best buying opportunity for this if you wanted to hold long-term is to probably wait after the land sale. I think these are still gonna run up, but you, I, I'd have a lot more confidence that you got in at a better price if you wait for after that land sale and when people just start dumping these because for whatever reason that is what people always do. Next couple projects here. We're almost there, guys. This is a marathon race here, 30 minutes in. Holy crap. Uh, if you're still sticking with me here, make sure to give a thumbs up on the video. Uh, you know, make sure to give a thumbs up here. Uh, but yes, next project here, Ape Nation. Another Ape project, but uh, one thing that I felt like was important to bring up is that they did increase their website and the community has been developing around this pretty strongly. And they actually just released like their juices, which are gonna be used for mutations uh, recently. I think they airdropped most of them uh, and they're going for about 30 ADA right now. So this is potentially a project to keep your eye on as well. Uh, this could be another Ape project that simply runs up uh, if it becomes one of those, you know, super strong Ape projects and people really get priced out of chilled conks and ape society which are both over 2000 right now so a lot of people are probably priced out and looking for the next best project so this is one to keep on your radar Ada and Vedas, another project I really like they're actually releasing their white paper on the 20th of this month and I think that you know, there could be some crazy stuff in there and that this project could do very well or at least have a run up leading up to that announcement. You know, these could probably run up, you know, from this 475 all the way up to, you know, 550, 600, 650 right before that announcement. And depending on how great that announcement is, maybe these go down a little or they, you know, go up a lot. I have no idea. It really depends how much these run up beforehand. All I know is that I still have like 12 of these and I'm not selling them. I'm just holding them long term. Uh, you know, I like the project. I think they're going to do big things. Uh, next thing here that I want to bring up is the mandrels. I've been continually buying mandrels. One thing that I want to say about mandrels, guys, is that it takes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of sales to really move this project. The floor is so deep and it's so tight, guys. I really like it when projects don't have a tight floor. So let's say it goes from 100 to 120 to 130 to 140, because that means if four bought up, all of a sudden it goes from 100 to 140. In this situation, they have about 11% of their mandrels listed, which isn't too crazy when compared to other projects. Uh, but the problem is, is the, the floor is super tight. I mean, just to get from 144 to, you know, 165 is going to take, you know, 30 mandrels or something ridiculous like that. But the reason I like mandrels, the reason I keep buying them is they are actually the third largest eight project on Cardano. When you look at the overall volume, and I believe when you look at the floor price as well, and I do think that a lot of people are going to continually get priced out of chilled Kongs and out of ape society, and they're going to be looking for other options. And I think the mandrels could be one of the main options that pops up next, just because it is the next biggest one. And if you go on their website, they have their whole entire roadmap laid out. And it does look like they're committed to doing a bunch of things in the space when 
when in the beginning, when they first released the project, they were really just an art focused project and they said, hey, we're not promising anything, right? So it's cool to see that they're actually going to start delivering on a lot of these things. And that's why in the past month, it went from 50 to 150 ADA. So we, even though it's a little bit harder to move, we can't sleep on the fact that it literally had a 3X in the past month and has been holding this 130 to 150 ADA level pretty well. So uh, yeah, that's why I've been buying up a lot of mandrels. Last project I wanna bring up here, guys. Holy crap, let me... Oh, oh my gosh. You know, you can only talk for... Oh, you can only talk for so long. Uh, next project here, though. Makosis. They're actually releasing their planet this week, guys. The sale is happening on the 11th and 12th. There's gonna be... 10,000 of these pieces of land uh, and the first 5,000 of those pieces of land are reserved to Mikosi ITO holders. ITOs are the main ones. They, they're these guys. The registration uh, deadline was today and they're actually going to be doing snapshots from the 8th to the 10th. And if you hold during that time, you're going to be able to buy on the 11th. 5,000 are going to be reserved for these ITOs. Then their ITO2s, which are about 75 ADA, or they're basically breedables. Like what you, if you breed two Mikosis together, uh, essentially you get those ITO2s. Those are going to have 3,000 reserved for them. If you have at least five of those ITO2s, which I think is, you know, 75 ADA each, so about, you know, 400 ADA, then you're guaranteed at least one piece of that land. And then uh, I believe like the 2000 after that is reserved for something. I have no idea. Odds are though, guys, if you don't own this project, you're not going to be able to get any of that land. And I do expect that land to do decently well. I th the retail changes, the, the mint price changes depending on uh, essentially if you have the ITOs or the ITO2s or whatever the case is, uh, but it's around 100 ADA. I expect the floor for this to be probably like 200 ADA. Uh, this is another project, guys, that I made a complete video on, and I think that their play to earn metaverse gaming and just all the stuff they're doing in the space is actually very impressive, and they are a lot further ahead than a lot of other projects. I do expect these Mikosi ITOs to drop a decent amount after this land sale, maybe after that snapshot happens, so on the 11th or maybe the 12th or 13th, we could see these Mikosis drop all the way back down to maybe 400 or maybe even 350 ADA, just because there's gonna be a sell-off after that land sale. That might be a good opportunity to buy some of these after that and uh, basically continue to breed these ITO2, uh, ITOs and get those ITO2s. If you have two of these guys, make some passive income from that and then hopefully make some money from their game when it actually comes out. And I do have to admit, guys, their team is doing a, a pretty good job. Even though I'm not like a huge cutesy, uh, artsy person, like even though this isn't necessarily my style and I'm not necessarily into breeding stuff, you have to sh you have to give them a shout out of just all the stuff they're doing and their art and their team and their execution. So I think long-term, like this is a project to stay. Now, what exactly did I buy and sell this week? Well, to be honest, guys, I really haven't done too much just because I was gone for, a, you know, about two weeks weeks and I really wasn't looking at my computer. I really just needed a break from everything. Uh, so I really haven't done too much. Uh, I did buy that one big nation pitch. Like I said, I'm slowly going to be getting into this project just because I haven't seen the price moving down as much as I really wanted it to. Uh, I haven't sold any of my Ada and Vedas. I bought like another, I bought a decent amount more mandrels. I have no idea how many mandrels I have. I know on one of my other wallets, I was really going ham. Uh, and I know that wallet has more mandrels than this one. Um, but I've been buying a decent amount of mandrels. Like I'm bullish on mandrels. Maybe I'm completely, completely wrong about mandrels and maybe I take an L on it, but this is a long-term play for me just because I do think people are gonna start looking for uh, eight projects, top eight projects that they can't afford if they can't get Ape Society and, and Chilled Kongs. Cause think about it guys. I mean, Ape Society is gonna be five, 10K uh, at least, you know, Chilled Kongs, five, 10K, maybe 20K, 30K. Like we have no idea and people are gonna be looking for those alternatives. I did get 28 snowmobile parts uh, for Mint. I was able to mint 28 of them. I had 14 different wallets, all with a Yeti, all on uh, on a different Discord, all connected, and I was able to mint on every single one of them. A lot of people are like, how many hands do you have? But really, guys, it's just about being fast, being consistent, not giving up. When that Mint started to when that Mint ended to when I minted uh, all from all 14 of those wallets, I did not stop clicking. I did not 
even look away for half a second. And that's really the dedication you need if you really want to mint a bunch of stuff. I have fast hands uh, and I, I just go and I, I have uh, you know servers where the internet's really fast and I just nonstop click and refresh and really uh, and grind. And I was able to get 28. I'm really stupid though. I didn't think that I was going to be able to mint on 14 wallets, but I have over 20 Yeti. So I really should have set up more wallets for this drop. But regardless, I can't complain. It was a pretty profitable drop. I was able to get 28 of those parts. I bought four more on the secondary market for a little bit more money than I wanted to pay, but that enabled me to complete seven of these snowmobiles. And shout out to the few guys on the community discord that helped trade uh, to basically help me get two more of these snowmobiles. The rest of it, so uh, this took up 21 parts. So I guess I sold what? Um, 11 because I had 28 and then I bought four on the aftermarket. Those 11 I sold actually uh, paid for all of the other parts as well as having a little bit more profit. Uh, so now all these snowmobiles are straight profit guys. And this is why I really stress about scaling up and looking for these high quality drops. Because even if I just snow sold these snowmobiles right now for 800 or 900 each, 900 times seven is 5,600, I think. Uh, and then I made an additional 500 plus paid for all of the other stuff off the parts. So this drop alone was a 6K profit drop. Uh, so it's really possible, guys. Like if you scale up, if you prepare, if you know what drops to go for, if you're fast, if you train, like these are the type of drops that you only need once a month and now all of a sudden you're making uh, you know a decent amount of money a year and I uh, you know I bring this up not to flex or anything like that but really to show you guys that it is possible to make a significant amount of money doing this I don't lie about anything literally like you can make a significant amount of money doing this uh, just looking for the right drops these snowmobiles I'm personally just holding for the long term I'm not selling them right now the things I sold were the parts I got my profit on top of you know covering my initial mint price and I'm just going to be holding these. Uh, I haven't sold any of the Pavia. These pugs, I got 10 from the mint. I did mint them. I'm not selling any of them. I'm just holding them. I actually got two that are really rare. I mean, that's going to be a little less rare when they have the 2,500 airdropped, but they, I believe they were both in like the top 200. Uh, so that was pretty good pulls. I think like the floor for them really is like seven or 800. So uh, super cool. Shout out to Adam for getting me on that whitelist. I, I, I think those are going to do really well. Uh, these are all the false idols guys that I, I made a mistake on. I actually did the math on these. If I sold them all for floor, I lost $4,000, uh, about $3,700, uh, $3,750 uh, on this. So I take a lot of L's too, unfortunately, like that's just going to happen. I still like when I was putting in on the spreadsheet, I was like, you are such an idiot, dude. Like, what were you thinking? How can you throw away 4k that easily like that? And now I'm just holding them because like, what's the point of selling them at this price? But it's like, prime example of never getting to P1, like never buying P1. We have no idea how high or low this is going to be. Like it's much better to just wait and see what happens and, and where price settles rather than getting greedy and hoping things continue to run. Like I hope that this is at least a learning lesson uh, for you guys. Uh, still holding some of these chilled Kongs, uh, still holding all these jets. I had bought some additional jets a while ago, back when, you know, they were like 182. I uh, bought one legendary one for like 800, I think. And then just a couple more Yetis. Since people are all selling their Yetis right now, I'm just buying up some more Yetis. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Mostly just buying Yetis, buying mandrels, uh, you know, making those snowmobile parts, looking for additional stuff to flip in the future. And, uh, you know, there isn't anything too crazy that I want to swing trade right now. So I'm holding it. I want to hold at least 10,000 ADA at a time, just in case the CNFT market does go south a little bit. At least I have some ADA on the sidelines to, you know, get into DeFi or just hold an ADA or, you know, whatever I want to do. Now that pretty much sums up this week's CNFT market update, guys. I know this one was a little bit longer. Like I said, I just needed to cover a lot of different stuff. Uh, and my brain is like going all over the place. Also, I think it's this way. This little cute, oh man, it's so weird. This little cute water salamander thing, me and my roommate were like thinking about getting one as a pet. Uh, because if you notice, like it's constantly, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I edit stuff. It's constantly smiling. Like it's one of those, uh, I forget what it's called, atosals. It's constantly smiling though. I was like, how cool would it be to have one of these atosals in an aquarium fish tank thing? It needs to be at least 20 gallons. And every day I can just walk over and check it out and and like maybe smile because it's smiling at me. But then I was looking into it, it's like a ton of work. Like you gotta clean this fish tank all the time. You gotta like, 
have different filters. The water's gotta be like 68 degrees. Like it's just kind of a pain. And I, I personally don't have any pets, even though I love pets, because I just don't like having that responsibility of taking care of a pet, especially since like my mind is all over the place all the time. I'm like, oh man, like I don't wanna forget about taking care of this. Like I don't wanna like be doing something uh, and like just forget to like clean the tank and all this stuff. But I've been thinking about it. And if I do get one of these, uh, we're gonna name it something on the channel. Uh, but like no promises though, cause I don't know if I'm gonna get this. I just thought it was cool. I literally just found out about these like two days ago. And I was like, what a cool little pet that's a lot less to take care of than like a dog or a cat right now. So I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it because I think it like, yeah, I'm thinking about it. But uh, yeah, uh, just to share a little bit too of the California trip for, for people still listening that are curious is it was a ton of fun. Uh, essentially, I flew in to, I live in North Carolina uh, in the US and I flew into LAX the friend that I was visiting, his name is Sam. And uh, I've been best friends with Sam since fourth grade. Like he's one of my best bros. We've been hanging out pretty much on a weekly basis. Like every week since fourth grade, we went to the same school together. Like we moved to, a, you know, two and a half, three hours away from where we grew up. And we went to the same school together and uh, hang out all the time. Like he's really the guy that got me into like working out, got me into hiking, outdoor stuff more, uh, got me into Super Smash Bros. I haven't played Super Smash Bros in a while before this trip, uh, but sometimes we'll just mess around, uh, uh, play Super Smash Bros in, in different games on like the Switch and stuff. But yeah, it was super fun. Like I flew into LAX, we got there, we went to this amazing, so first off, first off, so he's in the military and he just got stationed there about four or five months ago and I haven't seen him since then. He hasn't seen his family, he hasn't seen me, he hasn't seen his brother Sean who we hang out with all the time. And uh, essentially I was like, oh man, like that kind of sucks. He moved across the country and he doesn't, he didn't really know anyone. I was like, all right, like I'm gonna take some time uh, and go up there, hang out, say what's up to him. So I fly in, and I have my backpack. I always just take my backpack on trips. Like I'm a minimalist guy, right? Like I literally wear black and white tees all the time. Like I, I'm really like, I don't like thinking about stuff. I don't want to think about like, uh, like fashion. Like I, I'd rather just like put on a t-shirt and like, uh, think of other decisions that are more complicated, uh, and limit my decisions that I don't want to make. But regardless, essentially I flew in and I had to have like a suitcase uh, like a like a suit bag, a bag to put my suit in because there was this formal dinner we were going to for the military. Uh, so I looked at like I was carrying a bomb around everywhere I went, but essentially he couldn't even pick me up to like, I, I basically was like, okay, do I wanna wait in this airport for eight hours or do I wanna go do something? So I got an Uber and I went to Santa Monica and I had like a, like a little, that little bag with just my suit in it that I hated how I needed to bring another bag. And then I had like a 40, 50 pound backpack on because I had all my stuff in it that I didn't even end up using. Uh, so essentially I'm walking around Santa Monica looking like a terrorist or something crazy. But yeah, uh, once he I walked around, like went to the, like the little pier area, went to the beach, hung out a little bit, uh, got some drinks at this random Mexican place and charged my phone. Uh, the super strong margaritas, like two margaritas. I was like, what the heck? heck dude like it, it was it was crazy i was just like it was weird too because like i never drink by myself in a restaurant i ran a mexican restaurant in a state i don't know but it was actually kind of a vibe i was like oh like i kind of like this um which might be a problem but regardless uh he finally picked me up and we he was about an hour and a half away uh like port honimi honimi something like that and uh yeah like throughout the day like he was mostly doing his training uh, and I would just like go on adventures. So I did a bunch of different hikes. Uh, we went rock climbing, we played spike ball. I really like playing spike ball, uh, which, you know, if you don't know what spike ball is, look it up, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, got some really great food while we were there. Got some amazing Italian food. We got some killer ramen on the last day. We were really just hanging out and catching up since it's, you know, been a while. Went to the beach a, dis uh, a decent amount, you know, volleyball. Uh, we went to, uh, on the weekend when he was off, we actually went to Big Sur, which is like, they're, they're like basically you're on a road, like US one, most like beautiful highway in the world probably. Uh, and it's like on the coast of California and you're like driving around cliffs and you have like these huge mountains on one side and like a cliff and like the beach on the other. And you drive up and down the coast, it's super nice. And we went to this place called Big Sur, did a couple hikes there. Uh, we were actually supposed to camp out and this dude, we, we get there at like 11 or 12 o'clock at night to camp out and he literally forgot the poles for the tent. 
he f he remembered everything else but the polls. So we get there, we paid and everything, and we couldn't even set up our tent. And plus, I just had shorts on. I didn't realize it was going to be cold in California. It was literally like 50 degrees at night, and I was going to freeze my butt off anyways. I was like, oh, crap. Like, I'm not even going to sleep. Uh, but regardless... We ended up like having to ditch that and we actually went to a naval base because he's in the Navy and there's this naval base that has the Hotel Del Monte, which is actually a historical hotel that we just randomly stayed at for only 130 bucks when like motels were like 300 bucks. So super clutch on the military for that. And uh, yeah, we stayed in the Hotel Del Monte, which is actually like a 200 year old hotel uh, that a lot of presidents and a lot of major uh, royalty people from all over the world have gone to and actually burned down two different occasions, has a ton of history for it, was a super cool hotel. Uh, um, and, it, you know, it turns out in World War II, the Navy, the military needed, like, more room to house their soldiers uh, before they went overseas and stuff. And that actually, the Hotel Del Monte actually became one of the places for that. And then afterwards, the, the military actually bought it. And now it's like a post-grad uh, military base. I don't know if it's for the Navy or for all branches, but it was super cool. We went from, you know, having to sleep in a, in a tent uh, and not the best conditions to staying in that hotel. And uh, yeah, we just had fun. It, we had a lot of fun, and it was it was cool seeing my friend. I really had uh, I re had really brought everything, hoping that I could work remotely. But then when I got there, I was like, all right, you know, I need to spend time with my friend. I need to focus on that, and I need to focus just clearing my mind and resetting. I have so much stuff going on, guys, and I, I'm sure everyone does, and sometimes you just need to disconnect from everything, get away from everything, and clear your mind. So I made the executive decision. I was like, bro, like I've got to just clear my mind here, especially since I'm launching a project soon, and I know when I launch that project, like I'm not gonna have, like that is going to be a huge, uh, a huge additional responsibility, and I already have so many people that message me every day, uh, and it's like, oh, you know, I just needed a break, but I'm back and I'm sorry for that little, uh, you know, scary moment to the people that watched the previous video. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone that, that hasn't seen it. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad to be back and I'm glad I had a fun trip. And I, re and one of the things that I realized guys is like, sometimes you just got to put a pause on life and, and do fun shit and do cool shit and, and, and hang out with people that you haven't hung out with a while and, and see family and see friends and, and enjoy life because we can get so caught up in NFTs or crypto or making money or this or that, that we fail to really enjoy the small things in life or this smiling uh, water salamander uh, that I really want but probably won't get but is super cute. Uh, you know, we got to enjoy little things like that uh, and green screens with uh, bald dudes uh, talking about NFTs and yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys learned something. Sorry this video was a little bit long and I uh, hope you guys have an awesome day.